August 1994, a man is murdered in his home. The case went cold for 22 years. His son living in the Rogue Valley waiting for some answers. Those answers finally came when a Utah man confessed to the crime. But the fight for justice is just beginning. NBC 5's Kristen Hosfeld has a story you won't see anywhere else. Disbelief more than anything, just disbelief. Disbelief and hope. Two emotions Trevor Boucher is familiar with. Two threads that have woven their way through the story of his life, binding him to two men forever. The first, his father. She met my younger brother's dad, Bob Boucher, uh, whose name I still carry, and he fell in love with my mom and wanted to marry her even though she was pregnant with me, and so they got married. Married and divorced, but still Bob Boucher treated Trevor as his own. A presence in the young man's life until 1994 when he was murdered, stabbed 53 times at his home in Kelso, Washington. They didn't have any real solid leads. The killer never found. Every time you turn on the television, there's a new program about unsolved cases. And it, I would find myself being kind of drawn to those shows and seeing you know, what they do to solve old cases. After a while, you, you just kind of begin to accept that you'll never know what happened. Even with acceptance, Trevor still wondered. Until this spring, when Brandon David Wright walked into a Utah police station and confessed. Came across my father's uh, shop and stayed a couple nights in there hiding out. And of course, it's a shop, so there's no food. And so after a couple days of no food, he broke into my father's camp trailer where my father was living and was stealing food and that's when my father came home from work and discovered him in there and the scuffle between the two began and, and my father was killed. Once again disbelief but an unexpected meeting also gave way to hope. Trevor and Brandon met in Kelso. He saw a man who had struggled with drugs and bad choices but overcame to have a good life with a family. He saw a man who was deeply sorry for what he'd done and a man who was struggling with his faith. And I asked him, why did you turn yourself in? And his answer, quote unquote, was because of the Holy Spirit. And through the questions I was asking him, I asked him if he still had faith. And he said that he does, and, but it's been difficult to maintain. Trevor was inspired to show grace. Do you forgive Brandon, right? I do, um, because I know the complete story now. It's not excusable. The whole story doesn't make it excusable, but it makes me understand, and because my faith makes me inclined to forgive. He met with the prosecuting attorney on the case and asked for the minimum possible sentence. I told him that I've, I feel that to not perpetuate this tragedy that my father's life has already been cut short and that can't be changed. And the only thing that makes it a bigger tragedy is a second individual's life kind of ruined. Trevor's ideal sentence, 10 years. Clearly he has to do some time for what has happened. There, there's no question. The minimum for murder in the second degree, 12. I'm not so concerned about the crime he's charged with so much as the time spent. The charge was accepted. The suggested sentence was not. Now, Trevor is frustrated with justice and the lack of consideration prosecutors are giving his wishes. To get the call that they're going for 17 years, that's not, that's not really taking our feelings into account as far as what we want to see come of this. And like I said, the if they're really going to take into account how we feel, then they should take into account that going for a longer sentence kind of perpetuates the whole thing, perpetuates the whole tragedy. He's hoping public opinion will help sway the judge, and Brandon Wright will have a chance to be the father Trevor didn't get to have. His life is going to be changed regardless of how long he serves. But I didn't want to diminish his chance of being a father. Somehow, some way, being able to make a positive impact. For now, Trevor is once again waiting, this time for the sentencing date. 
No matter what happens, he knows he's done what he can to help the man who took so much from him. A lot of people say, now that you know what happened, you have closure. It's like, you don't. It doesn't really give you closure. But being able to forgive him, meet him face to face and forgive him gives you closure. And he has one hope for Brandon Wright. That he doesn't lose faith, that his faith is strengthened, that he asks for forgiveness, and that somehow he's able to have a positive impact for the rest of the days he's here on this earth. Trevor says the only way he has made it through this situation is with the support of his wife, Gina. She's been with him every step of the way. And right now, he's frustrated with the justice system. He plans to be at Brandon Wright's sentencing on Tuesday and hopes that the judge will take his wishes into consideration. NBC5, of course, will continue to follow this story and will update you next week.